Hey friends, today I'm going to show you how to break down each letter in the alphabet to figure out how to construct your letters. I know I've talked about this before, but each of the letters in the alphabet are just a few strokes combined together to create the entire letter. And I get a lot of questions about people saying, how do I know which way to go and how do I know how to form my letters? So I thought it would be um, helpful just to break these down for you. I'm going to show you in each individual stroke and then I'm going to do them together. So here we go. To start, we're just going to start with A. It's just this basic stroke that you see all over. Um, as you watch this, you are going to see me use this stroke for a lot of letters. So for B, I like to do my top like this, but you can skip this and just do a straight B. And then we're going to do this letter together. So now when we add them together, we're going to have our B. Which, as you can see, this and this are the same thing, just flipped over. So now we're going to do our C, which is the same stroke again. So we're going to move on to D, which is also the same stroke. So now we've had three, four letters that are basically all using the same strokes in some way, shape, or form. So when we combine those together, you can also do it like this. And then E. So F, there's a lot of different ways to do F, but I do mine just basic like this. I sometimes add a loop to it, so it's like this. Oops, that was a very good one. I sometimes add a loop to it, so it's like this. Um, and that I do all in one stroke. If you have a hard time with that and figuring out where to go, you can just draw a shape like this and just try to stay within your shape with your F. And that'll give you a little bit of a guide. So again, you can just, let me show you with a different color or a pencil, how about, let me show you with a pencil. You can just draw an oval and then try to stay in this shape. I saw that trick on some lettering worksheets that I purchased to use with my iPad and I will link the girls below their Instagram who put that in their worksheets because I thought that was super helpful if you have trouble just to draw an oval and then keep your lettering right within that. So next we're going to move on to G. And so again, the same little C that we made and you can do this however you like with your G, this bottom part, um, but keep in mind that we're going to use this a lot. So your Y and your J are also going to use the same stroke. So when we put them together, we just have G. Um, again, this curve right here, I'm going to use the same thing for my H. So same structure as I have for my B, and then I'm going to just add this. And if you look here at my stroke that I used for my A, that is also going to be my I. And again, let's look over here at my G. That is going to be the basic stroke for my J. So I like to do this part just because it's a good to get in the practice of um, connecting. So anytime we have a letter before J, we know we're gonna have this up here because otherwise it's difficult to attach to a J. So I like to get in the practice of adding this little tail here. And again, if we look at our B stroke and our H stroke, that is also what I'm going to use for my K. So when we combine these together, and I do have lettering worksheets and all of these are broken down and every single one that I do, I break them down like this for each letter and give you arrows and directions on how to follow those because I just think it's helpful to see the anatomy of your letters. So we are going to look at this again. So our B, now we've done this how many times? Our B, our H, and our K. I'm going to do it again for my L. And then just add this little tail up here. Um, oops. So it's going to look like that. And we add those together. There's our L. And so this stroke that we have from our B, our H, and our K, I'm going to do this on a smaller scale to create my M. And I lift up my pen three times when I'm making an M. Oops, I usually go down here too. And this just helps to get it all even and kind of carefully map out where I'm going next. 
and I'm going to do the same basic stroke again for my N. And my O starts a little bit like this letter, um, and also my I just start it a little bit over. And you're going to want to make sure you don't start too high here or you're going to have a hard time coming back around. So I start about right here. And then I go like this. So like that is how I do my O. And the same um, stroke that we used here for our M's and our N's and our B's and our L's, I'm going to use that on my P as well. And then I'm going to go like this just like my B. Um, a lot of times with my B I do add this too. Like I said, it's just good to get in the practice of going where you know you're going to need to go next um, to attach to your next letter if you were actually doing some hand lettering. And then a Q. We have this seam just like our A. And I do this with my Q's. You could also just go like this. And the way I do my R's is I like to have a loop here. Um, there are a few different ways that people do R's. I have seen some people just go like this. I don't know if that's easier for you, but I just prefer the look to do this loop here. And then add the tail on. And my, neck, my S I also am going to do in two different strokes. So just like that. And I lift up after every stroke, even if I'm connecting them. It just makes it a lot easier. So we are almost done. The T is very basic. Just a basic stroke like our A up here. And then a U. I go up with my upstroke and then down and I overlap them. I just find that easier to make sure that I'm connecting that well. And for my V, I just go like this. And I do the same strokes for my W. And you can add a, more of a curve onto your W if you like. It's just dependent upon your style. For an X, I do my X like this. And that is so I can easily attach to whatever letter comes before and whatever letter comes after. And I used to try and try and try to do my crossover from the bottom to the top and I could just never get it right. Um, I'll show you. I probably can't get to see. It just never looks right for me until I started doing it um, from the bottom up. And that definitely makes sense um, once I started thinking about it that this line is thin. So you are going to want it to go up just like an upstroke. But if you try to go down, it just doesn't, it won't come naturally because we naturally want to push harder when we're doing downstrokes. At least that's what we should want. If we are, if we are practicing our calligraphy, we should want to push harder when we're doing downstrokes. So... So if we do that as an upstroke, it's going to be thinner and a lot more natural. So let me just show you finally here. And Y is going to be this same stroke we've been doing for a U. And then we're going to go back to our J stroke or our G stroke. And put those two together. And then Z. And I will also show you how I do an ampersand just because I always think that's kind of difficult. So this is how I do mine. Pull it up and then add this guy here. There's probably many ways you can do this. This is just the way that I do it. And I think that it goes along with the way that I do all of my other strokes. So this is my alphabet broken down for you into strokes. I hope that's helpful. Um, once you really break it down this way, you will realize that you just need to learn a few strokes and keep doing those over and over and over again. And that is how you're going to be able to achieve a really cohesive alphabet. So like I said, if you are interested in practice sheets, I do have these broken down for you. And then you can trace over my letters until you're comfortable to do it all on your own. So if you have any interest in those, I will link them in the description box below. 
But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and please subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. Please leave your questions in the comments box below and I will do my very best to get back to you. Um, that is where I get so many of my video ideas. So if you have a chance, please leave in the comments box below um, what you are struggling with or what questions you have about hand lettering and I would be happy to work on making videos like that for you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. If you haven't found me on Instagram, it is at howtohandletter and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.